Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how you solve such questions. If you have been given such a question as this one, you will never fail it in your life unless you just want. Uh, the same way I'm going to explain this is exactly the same way you solve trusses. You can be given a truss like this and then maybe something it looks like this then they ask you to find the force in each member of these trusses maybe you have um you have something like this you have um you have something like this and then maybe this truss is also maybe connected to the wall like that so when you have such a question the same way i'm going to solve this question is exactly the same way you solve a truss so i'm going to help you solve this question in just a few minutes so if you have not yet subscribed to my channel make sure that you do so by clicking on the button that says subscribe and um, you will be able to see to view all the videos that I'm going to be posting every day then apart from that if you need tuitions feel free to inbox me in mathematics and uh, physics all right so let's uh, solve this uh, question the question says determine oh rather it's this one okay so this question says the system of noted codes shown in the figure below support the indicated weights um, compute the tensile force in each code so how do you compute the tensile force so the first thing that you have to understand about such a question is that if you have maybe a lot of forces being concentrated on one point like the way we have there so you make sure that um, when when you begin to uh, uh, or if you want to know where to begin from when finding these attentions uh, or these forces in these uh, codes, you first have to make sure that you check the codes. So on the, I mean, you check the joints. So on this joint and that joint, you you make sure you check all the joints in short, and then you make sure that at least the joint that you are getting, the one, the joint that you should always be starting with, is the one that has a maximum, a maximum of two. A maximum of two unknown unknown forces unknown forces so the maximum of two unknown forces this is the first thing you should consider you should check at least a joint which has a maximum it shouldn't exceed two a maximum of two unknown uh, tensions or forces and then the other thing you you need to put into consideration is that Apart from having two unknown, there should be at least one, at least, at least one, at least, um, yeah, there should be at least one known force or known tension. Yeah, so this is what we are supposed to put in mind. These are the most, these are the two most important um uh, uh, things that you need to note for trusses if you have a truss if you have a truss and you've been asked to find uh, the forces in that in each member of uh, of that truss you first have to take um, summation of forces about a certain point or summation of moment about a certain point to get the the other external reaction forces so like if you have a, a, a truss like this there's there's a reaction that is coming from there if you have a truss like this connected on the wall like that there's a reaction which is going into the wall same applies uh, to this here there's a reaction that is going out of the wall like that uh, provided the force that you have is somewhere located there if you have maybe 40 kilo, 40 newton so you make sure that you first take summation of forces about any point or you take forces you uh, rather you find forces in the x and in the y and then find the reaction forces after finding the reaction forces then you continue finding the what is you first find because when you find the reaction force this one is uh, is one of the reactions so meaning you're going to have this and that being unknown but at least you have this one reaction force which you are going to find after finding uh, summation of forces in the y so after doing that it means this one tells us to say it's a point where we can start from calculating the forces of each member in this trust so now let us get back to the to our question so we look for a point a joint uh, that has two unknown and at least one which is known so when you look at this here we have a we don't know a here we have we don't know a b is not known b is not known and then c is also not known at that point so this one just this one disqualifies this point because we have three unknown here so we move on to, uh, to the other joint 
so the other joint is this one so this joint we have d d is not known and then c is not known these are the only unknown forces and then we have one known which is this force which has been connected to the uh, code yeah like that so after finding that we can now quickly go into finding the we can now move on uh, to finding the the, is the the forces so let us draw this joint so this joint is I'm going to draw it here I'll make it a little bit big so that you see what will be happening so I have um, let me draw it here I have this joint I mean this cord there and this cord let me draw it properly so I have this cord and this cord then there's also this one which is going down so this one is 400 newtons so and and then the the other important thing is that whenever you i mean once you just once you get that joint whether you're dealing with uh, codes or you're dealing with uh, uh members in a trust you always have to ensure or you, ha you always have to assume that all these forces are intention meaning all the forces are pointing away from the joint that's what it means when you say all the forces are intention so yeah so we we assume that all these forces are pointing away from um fr from from i mean away from the the horses the point all right so we assume that they are all in tension meaning they are, the forces are all moving away from the joint so this joint here we have the angles at this joint we have the angles there we have been given to say this one is 75 this one is 30 so now we're going to be using Sokatoa to get the components of these um, uh, forces so let us get the forces in the X so we say all the forces in the X are supposed to add up to zero all the forces in the X are supposed to add up to zero for this um, uh, for this joint to remain in equilibrium yeah so all the forces in the X are supposed to add up to zero so let's get the forces in the X so the forces in the X we can get um when you look at this we have a triangle there we have a triangle there then this is 75 our 90 degrees is going to be there so to get the X component of D the X component of D is going to be uh, D let me draw the triangle here so I have a triangle there to help everyone so we have a triangle there and then we have 75 degrees so the x component of d is this one the y component of d is this one so to find the x component of d from sokatoa we use the opposite because d is here so we use the opposite and the hypotenuse which is d so uh we're going to use the opposite and the hypotenuse so meaning we're dealing with sine from sokatoa so from sokatoa we're going to deal with sine since we're using the opposite and the hypotenuse so it says sine 75 degrees is equal to um, the opposite which is um, yeah so the opposite which is the x component so I'm going to say d in the x so d in the x then everything divided by the hypotenuse which is just d so now to make dx in the I mean the, 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 the subject of the formula we cross multiply so d times sine theta we're going to get d sine theta is equal to d times 1 so i mean dx times 1 this will be dx is equal to d times sine 75 this is d sine 75 so dx is just d sine 75 so in the x the x component of d is going to be d sine uh, 75 d sine 75 degrees and then the x component of c the x component of c the triangle for c is going to be like this so the triangle for c is going to be like this so the 90 degrees angle will be there of course so it will be something like this the angle is there then the 90 degrees will be there and then the c is there so what we need is the x component for c which is uh, facing the opposite i mean facing towards the negative so if, since it's facing towards the negative we expect to, to put a negative in front of that and then this one is also opposite to the angle so since it's opposite and we have c as our hypotenuse it means that for for d to find d in the x we say d sine theta so for this one as well since it's opposite um we are going to use sine theta as well so this would be c sine theta c sine theta our theta is 30 so it says c sine 30 is equal to zero 
the reason why I've ended here is because we don't have any other x component here that we what, that we should use. So let us find the value of d. So the value of d is simply just going to be equal to when you make a d the subject of the formula in this expression which I've written here, you discover that you're going to have d sine 75 is equal to when this crosses the equal sign to become a positive uh, c sine 30. So when we divide by sine 75, sine 75, you get the value of d to be. Um, when you divide sine 30 and sine 75, you get uh, sine 30 divided by sine 75, you get 0 0.5176. So 0 0.5176. Uh, C. So this is what you are going to get. So this will be our equation 1. Let us also find the summation of forces in the Y. So summation of forces in the Y at, that, at this same particular joint, we are going to, have, we are going to say this, is, this should give us a 0. So the first one that we have is um, the value of, uh, so we have this one is D, this one is C. So the Y component of D is adjacent so y component of d which is this one is adjacent to the angle meaning we're using cos so what we're going to say is we're just going to say d cos 75 so we're going to say d cos 75 the reason why i've not added the negative because it's going towards the positive y axis and then the other angle that we have is the y component of c it's also going towards uh, the positive y so this one this one is also an adjacent to 30 there so 30 is there and then it's adjacent to 30 so we're going to say c cos uh, 30 and this one is also going to be positive because it's going up and then we also have a negative ang a negative uh, force which is this one here which is facing down there so we have a negative 400 going down there so we say negative 400 and then the, everything is equal to zero because all the forces are now done so from there we can take this 400 to the other side of the equal sign and then while there's d in this expression i'm going to put this, uh, this part so while there's d i'm putting 0 0.5176 so 0 0.5176 times c and then i'm replacing d there and then i have cos 75 there let me say plus a c cos 30 is equal to 400 so 400 when you have this you can now add this and that so when you multiply that times um, cos 75 times cos uh, 75 you get 0 0.0.13397 0 .13, c then plus cos 30 so cos 30 is simply just 0 0.8660 zero. so 0. Uh, 0 0.866 um, 0 how many do we have 1 2 3 4 5 uh, so here, even here we write 5 0 3 then C is equal to 400 so I've written a lot of decimal places because I want to be as accurate as possible so when you add the two there when you add this one and that one there uh, 0 0.133 um, nine seven you are getting a number that is close to one so when you when you round off this number which is 0 0.9999995 so this one is just the same as one when you round it off so this plus that you are getting one so one so we're getting one c in short one c which is just the same as just c it's just the same as writing c in short okay so our c is equal to what we have this side so this side when you add that you are getting one we're just getting c rather so c would just be equal to 400 so we've managed to find c let us now find d so we just replace our value of c there to find d so d is equal to 0 0.5176 while the c will put 400 there so the value of d becomes um so we say uh, 400 times 0 0.5176 so the value of D is going to be 
207.04 is going to be the value of d so this is how you solve such questions so i've managed to find d and c let us now uh try let, let us now move on to the other joint because all the for, all the tensions at this joint have been found we have found uh, if you if, if you can see here we have found uh, D, we have also found C. We're just remaining with finding A and B. Then we're done with the question. Let us also, let, let us now move on to this joint where we're going to find A and B. Okay, so D, we found, uh, let me write them here. So I found C to be 400 uh, pounds and then D is equal to uh, 207.04 pounds. So from there, let us... Um, let, let, let us now go to this joint. So this joint we have A there, we have A in this, um, so we have a joint there. Then we have this uh, one, this side. Then we have another one which is 300, this side. And then we have C. So C we found it to be uh, 400, so I'm just going to write 400. Remember, we assume that all the forces in these, I mean all the tensions here um, are moving away from the joint, so meaning they are in tension in short. Yeah, moving away from the joint so this is how we, we make assumptions so after doing that we've been given the angles that this one is 30 and then we also have uh this one to be 10 105 so if this one is 105 here if this one is 105 it implies that so if this one is 105 this implies that um this plus that should give us 135 so this is 105, this plus that should give us 135. So when you subtract 135 from 180, we're getting this angle to be 45 degrees. So I've solved it in advance because it's one of the important angles that we are going to use. So let us quickly begin to find forces in the X and in the Y about this joint. So this one is B. So we start with the forces in the X about point B. I mean at point B there. So at point B, the forces in the X, we have the first triangle there, which is like this. So to find the X component of, uh, uh, of B there, we know that the angle is there 45. And then the X component is simply just opposite to the angle. So from Sokatoa, from Sokatoa, we can get the one which is dealing with the hypotenuse and the opposite. So hypotenuse and the opposite were using sine. So um, to find um, this, uh, uh, the, what is the x component of B? This one is going to be uh, B. We are using sine, B sine 45. And then it's going to the positive, so it's positive there. So to find the other, I mean, we need to find another x component that we have. The, the other x component that we have is, um, is A. So A is going towards the negative. So we say negative A. <coughs> so we say negative A. And then the other X component that we have is the X component of C. So the X component of these 400 newtons, uh, which is C, is going to be... Um, let, let me draw the triangle here. So we have... This is, the, uh, this is the triangle there. Let me draw it properly. So we have this. So we have C going like that, which is 400. Then we have a 90 degrees angle there. Then we're looking for the X component, which is this one. The angle is there. So the angle is there, there uh, when you look at it, it's opposite to the X component. So since it's opposite, meaning we have to use sine as well, even here, because we're dealing with the opposite given the hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. So this would be, uh, so this would be uh, 400. And since it's going to the, towards the positive this side, so it will be a positive 400 sine 30. Then we are done with all the components, the x components of this joint. So we say this is equal to 0. So this one can be found. This one is a number. It can be found. 400, time, 400 sine 30. Sine 30 is 0 0.5. So 400 sine 30 is simply just 200. So we can write this as B sine 45 minus a then plus 200 is equal to zero so this is our equation one let us also find the summation of forces in the y so the summation of forces in the y 
the first force that we have in the y is the y component of uh, b so the y component of b would just be since the x component was b sine 45 the y component would be b cos 45 and then the other component that we have is the y component of c y component of c since the since c is facing down so meaning we have the y component also facing down there so this would be a negative it's facing towards the negative uh, y axis so this would be negative um uh, so since the x component was sine 30 so this one would be uh, 400 cos 30 yeah because it's adjacent to this angle and then um the other y component that we have is simply the 300 newtons or rather the 300 pounds this one the 300 pounds so this is going to be uh, negative 300 as well since it's facing down and then the other one is i think they are done so now let us uh we say this is equal to zero so let us find the value of b because it's easier for us to find the value of b since we, these these two are numbers so say b cos 45 and then f f 400 times cos 30 when you multiply 400 times cos 30 the answer will be 346.41 so this would be negative 346.41 minus 300 is equal to zero so when you add the two you are going to get um 660 these are negatives rather so we're going to get b cos uh, uh 45 so b cos 45 uh, minus 646.41 is equal to zero so when, you, when this crosses the equal sign you're going to have b cos uh, 45 is equal to uh, uh, 646.41 divide by cos 45 divide by cos 45 so we're going to find the value of b to be equal to so the value of b is going to be equal to so when you divide by cos 45 you get 914.162 so 914 point one six two pounds so this is the value for b so this is the tension that is in b let us find the tension that is in a how do we find that so we can replace b there to find the to find the value of a so let me just do this okay so here while there is b there when we replace with 914 i'm going to say 914.162 uh, uh, sin 45 then minus uh, a plus 200 is equal to zero so when we multiply this times sine 45 we are getting 646.41 646.41 then when we add it to 200 when we add it to 200 there you are getting um, 800 so we say plus uh, 200 and then this negative a we take it to the other side of the equal sign so we say this is equal to positive a so when you add these two you are getting 800 and 46.41 is equal to a so the value of uh, a the tension in a is simply just uh, 846.41 and then the value of uh, b were found to be 914.162 they're supposed to be units this side pounds which is lb and then the value of c we found was 400 pounds and then the value of d we found was um 207.04 pounds so this is exactly how you solve um such a question so if you are to meet any question that is on uh chords that is on uh, ropes that is on strings any question that is uh based on um what do we call this? The the, the trusses, the members of the trusses. You solve it in the same way that I've solved this.
so thank you very much for watching today's tutorial if you have not subscribed to the channel make sure you do so by clicking on the subscription button there and if you have any questions feel free to contact me on my whatsapp line my name is Hamted. shalom shalom